Tēnā koutou katoa, ko Rachel ka ai mahuta tōku ingoa, no Ngāti Prou me ngai tahu ahau, ka mutu no ngā moutere o te moana nui a kiwa anō hoki. My name is Rachel ka ai mahuta and I'm a senior lecturer at the Auckland University of Technology. I also work in Te Pukarea, the National Māori Language Institute, and Te Whare Orongo Māori Kura, the International Centre for Language Revitalisation at AUT. Globalisation has been likened to colonisation in terms of the negative effects for Indigenous communities. Digital technology, a hallmark of globalisation, has contributed to a number of issues, including contemporary language domination through the widespread use of the internet, issues around cultural appropriation and homogenisation, as well as the proliferation of the misrepresentation of Indigenous peoples through inaccurate information and a lack of authenticity. However, digital technology has also been embraced by many Indigenous communities as it provides an effective method for disseminating information and connecting community members. It is an important modern tool for Indigenous languages and cultures. This is especially relevant due to the displacement and migration of many Indigenous peoples and the subsequent Indigenous diasporic communities. For example, Māori living in Australia. It's been estimated that one in six Māori now live in Australia. Digital technology has provided an opportunity to create virtual communities because as one Māori academic recently said, we don't live the village life anymore. In the case of language revitalisation initiatives, particularly through the use of social media, virtual language communities have been created. They transcend geographic boundaries and they are an example of taking a tool of language domination and turning it on its head by using it for our own purposes of endangered and minority language revitalisation. Social media is also being used to keep kinship connections alive through Facebook groups and pages. In fact, much of our social history is now on the internet. Other key areas of Indigenous digital interaction include iwi or tribal websites, digital language resources, academic and political blogs, online academic journals, and online journalism, which all increase accessibility and the widespread dissemination of information and news pertaining to Indigenous peoples. Increasingly, the digital is replacing the physical. Much, if not most, of our knowledge creation takes place online now. It is faster, easier, and more cost-effective to share knowledge digitally. Furthermore, the digital sphere is often the only place that some information exists. That is also what makes digital content vulnerable to being changed, deleted or lost, especially as it is now common for the digital copy to be the only copy. Often, Indigenous online projects are thwarted by a lack of funding. When those online projects are shut down, that knowledge is lost, or at the very least, it becomes inaccessible to the masses. This highlights the need to ensure that the knowledge and information that is shared digitally by Indigenous communities be collected, preserved and made accessible to future generations. From a Māori perspective, it is imperative to the survival of Māori culture to ensure that Māori knowledge is preserved. It is important to prepare today for the wants of tomorrow. This was one of the motivating factors behind a project that I'm involved in, Tāmata Toire, which involves researching collating, preserving, and digitally disseminating waiata and haka, Māori songs and chants, utilising digital technology for the benefit of my people. It is important that we as Indigenous peoples are aware of the significance and value of digital preservation for our daily lives. For example, with the prevalence of social media, especially as a way to connect the diaspora to home, most of our social history is being recorded on the internet. We need to preserve this information for the future. Organisations such as libraries have an essential role in this digital preservation. Libraries are regarded by many as houses of knowledge. The vessel for the transmission of that knowledge may have changed, but the importance of preserving the knowledge has not. In terms of Māori in New Zealand, libraries here have a responsibility to preserve the Indigenous voices of this land. It is essential for the promotion of tolerance and diversity that alternative worldviews are acknowledged and protected. Therefore, the digital preservation of Indigenous voices is vital. Included in this is the participation of Indigenous peoples in the decision-making process regarding how their knowledge is collected, preserved and disseminated. 
Sir Apida Nangata, a respected Māori leader, once said, E tipu e rea, mō ngā rā o tōu wao. Ko tō ringa ki ngā rākau a te Pākeha, hei ara mō te tinana. Ko tō ngākau ki ngā taonga a o tīpuna Māori, hei tikitiki mō tō mahunga. A ko tō wairua ki tō atua, nāna nei ngā mea katoa. The poem is most widely known for its imperative that Māori grasped the new ways of the Western world while still remaining true to the traditions of our ancestors as a way of moving forward into the future. I attended the Pulima National Indigenous Language and Technology Forum in Melbourne a few years ago, and the theme was Modern Ways for Ancient Words. I believe that Suapira Nangata's poem can be interpreted as encouraging Māori to find modern ways for ancient words. Indigenous communities will continue to face challenges as a result of globalisation and digital technology. We will continue to navigate those challenges to ensure that our voices are heard, protected and preserved as we look to the future. Kia ora.